Hello, my name is Andy Tattersall. I'm an information specialist based at Shaw, and this is a series of videos called App Hacks. Um, this series of videos is to help primarily um, medical and health research students uh, undertake their research, also kind of junior clinicians, get more out of mobile devices by using some of these apps. The one I'm going to show you now is Go Scholar, which is pretty much kind of Google Scholar uh, on a mobile device. So I'm going to show you how it works and how you can use it um, on your on your t on your tablet device. So this is um, Go Scholar, which um, at the time of recording was only on iOS. It was three it's three pound ninety nine, and it is an app version really of Google Scholar. Um, it probably won't be as comprehensive as what you might be used to with Google Scholar, but it's useful to have still on your device. So what we can do here is you can you can log into um, a Google Scholar account. If I click that, it'll want to take me to my Google account. Um, but what I can do is I've got an option here. I've got an option for my articles that I've saved at the top, case laws, and also my own library. So I can search articles with this top left-hand button, and I can choose... A, a date range, I can put in a custom range. So if I put the start year as let's say 2010, and the end year as 2016, I can uh, click to sort by relevance or by date. I can decide whether I want to include citations and patents, and I can also choose the file type that I want uh, and there's other options here from other online libraries. So I'm just going to do a search for, um, we'll do a search for diabetes, very crude search, but I'm just going to do a search for diabetes. And this will now bring up, it's brought up um, over a million articles from uh, diabetes from that particular date range. If I go in and select the date and change it to 2015 to 2016, hit return, and close that down. And then try again. I've now got 113,000 results for diabetes. And as with Google Scholar, you can see uh, how many times it's been cited according to Google Scholar, which which will be different to other things like Web of Science, etc. Um, and in here, I can see that there's PDFs attached to some of them. So if I click on this, um, I can um, go to the web version. I can save that reference, I can download it, I can cite it. So I've got all these options here along the top. Uh, if I hit the cite button, it shows me all the different, um, well, it certainly shows me five of the main, uh, four of the main uh, citation styles, and I can export those to uh, RefWorks, Reference Manager, EndNote, BibText, and all I have to do is just copy and paste that, and it's in that particular style. Um, I can also um, uh, save save things. So if I say so if I click on this one, um, I can decide to file it away. If I hit that button there, um, I can see which ones I've actually saved previously. Um, so in the case of this one, I'll hit the save button. Uh, sadly, it will need my actual password for this, so I'm not going to put this in. For this but it's self-explanatory when you use it yourself um, and there's also an option to annotate and make notes by clicking this button here in the middle so I can go in and type notes uh, as part of my collection. Like I say it's a very different experience to what you get from Google Scholar uh, but it's no doubt still useful for uh, students who want to go you know and do things uh, on, on, the, on the fly in the library if they're discovering new references they can save them and then go into this tab here on the right hand corner and go to their library um, again you need to be signed into a Google account uh, which I'm not signed into but it's fairly fairly self-explanatory so it's a different experience to what you might get uh, from Google Scholar itself but it's one worth just you know for the, for the cost of four pounds putting it onto your iPad and having a go with